50 million, according to statistics, 50 million people worldwide have dementia. When I was preparing for my episode with Jenna Maley about dementia, I came across this statistic and I was blown away by the numbers. And keep in mind, this statistic came from the World Health Organization as of 2019. In the episode with Jenna, we talked all about dementia, the positive approach to care, and also some implications for occupational therapy practitioners who work within this practice area. If you haven't heard the episode yet, you can go take a listen at otforlife.com 64 or on your favorite podcast player. If you want to hear a few of my takeaways from episode 64, just sit tight because that's what this episode is all about. If you're interested in occupational therapy, this is the place for you. This show aims to explore our profession by sharing who we are and what we do. Because for us, occupational therapy is more than just a job. Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome to OT for Life. To start this episode, I'm going to keep it real. And I'm going to open up a little bit about my personal experience with dementia. This episode was an extremely difficult episode for me to record and for me to talk about because my grandmother had dementia and she was going through this while I was in occupational therapy school. And now that it's been 11 years since I've been in school, I kind of, I reflect back and I think about the things that were talked about in school and then the personal experiences that I would have when I would visit with my own grandmother. And recording this episode brought back a lot of emotions that I went through during this time. If you work with people that have dementia or if you have friends or family members that have experienced this diagnosis, you know just how tough it really is on the person who has the diagnosis, as well as the caregivers and the rest of the family. There really is this kind of ripple effect across the board with everybody, and it's such a tough diagnosis. When we were recording, I was holding back tears, and then when I went to edit the episode, I want to tell you that I cried multiple times. I think some of it was my own reflections and my own emotions coming out. And then some of it was also the amazing stories that Jenna shared from her experience working within this practice area. But regardless of how tough recording this episode was for me, I am so thankful that Jenna came on and shared her journey, shared her story, shared her personal connection to dementia because her grandmother had it. And Jenna and I were in the same OT program. And neither one of us knew it at the time that we were both going through this with our grandmothers. But it's one of those things that I think we as occupational therapy practitioners can have such a beneficial role working in this practice area. And I think that there is still so much that can be done. And I really am just so honored that Jenna came on to share her story with us and continue to have conversations about dementia care and about improving dementia care for the clients and for other healthcare providers. And my second takeaway for this episode is that I learned so much about dementia care. Being that it's an area that I've never worked in before, I have no experience working with this population outside of my own personal experience. And there were so many things that just really stood out that I learned in this episode. And the big one was when Jenna talked about the gem states, I loved that approach. I'd never heard of that before. And I really loved that mindset about approaching our clients and the stages that they're in within dementia as a specific gem state. And that each person that has a diagnosis of dementia is still a person and they are still beautiful in their own right regardless of how much cognitive decline or how much the diagnosis is impacting them. And when Jenna was talking about the gem states, it just, it literally kind of just took my breath away. I loved that approach to the different stages of dementia. The other thing too is I had a lot of people actually reach out to me also talking about the gem states and also just talking about how applicable this episode was for their practice area and how they were going to be able to 
take away some super actionable tips and start implementing it within their practice the next day. I really love hearing from my community and hearing when people are listening and hearing when they're listening and the episodes really resonate with their clinical role or even within their personal role as well. And I love hearing that this episode with Jenna, that there were so many things that people would be able to take away and utilize within their practice. Another thing that I wanted to mention was that there have been some other fantastic podcast episodes done about dementia. This was the first time that I had specifically talked about it as a topic, and I think I had been hesitant to do it because it is still a very emotional thing for me to talk about. But if you want to hear another really good episode about dementia, you can go listen to Brock Cook's Occupied podcast. And he did an episode with Brooke George from Teaming with Dementia. And that was another great episode talking about the difference that we can make within this practice area. So I'll make sure to link to that episode in the show notes. So in case you want to go check it out, you'll be able to find it there. Takeaway number three for me has to do with finding your passion. During the episode, Jenna made a comment about how working in dementia care for her is her passion. She said it's, it's a calling. She said it's hard and it's heartbreaking, but it also lights her up inside and it fuels her passion to keep her going. And I think that comment resonated so much with me because that's exactly how I feel working in the practice area that I do, working in early intervention. I deal with so many difficult cases day in and day out, but working in this area, it feeds my soul. It lights me up. It is my passion and it is something that I feel drawn in order to do. And I know in the episode I talked about how so many times when I talk to people and I I share some of the emotionality of my job, and really just how difficult it can be. I've had so many friends that don't work in healthcare say, well, why don't you just go work in a different area? Why don't you Why don't you get out of what you're doing? And don't worry about that. It seems like it's really, really hard on you emotionally. And for me, I'm like, but like, this is my calling. And it's just something that I know that I need to do. But I also know that it does have an impact on me as a person and me personally. And so it's something that I really have to pay attention to. What we do as an occupational therapy practitioner is hard. We deal with a lot of very difficult situations, very difficult cases, difficult diagnoses, just heartbreaking stories that our clients tell us or that we experience as we're treating them. I think it's really important to note, especially for students out there, OT students, OTA students, new grads that are entering the profession, it's important to find your passion. Finding that practice area that lights you up, regardless of how difficult it is, is what you need to figure out. And I love how Jenna said that even though this is her calling and working in dementia care is where she wants to be, it still takes its toll on her. And that she realized that she needs to set up her schedule, set up her professional routine in a way that she can do the best work that she possibly can for her clients, but also take into consideration her own self-care. So as much as you can, find the practice area, find the job, find the position that lights you up, find your passion, because what we do is hard and you have to have that passion behind you in order to continue to do the jobs that we do on a daily basis. And that leads me into my last takeaway from this episode. And that really is recognizing the importance of self-care and highlighting compassion fatigue. Compassion fatigue is real. And I think a lot of times within this space, people will hear the word burnout and they'll think that they are just burned out with their position. But I think there's also this other there's another way that we can kind of think about this and it's compassion fatigue. I love what I do. I love working in early intervention and I love the impact that I'm able to have on my clients, but that doesn't mean that the emotionality of it doesn't affect me. And it really is this compassion fatigue where day in and day out dealing with so many 
difficult stories and difficult situations does have an impact on us as practitioners. And I really do think that it is important to be mindful of this and to work with our own schedules, to lean on our support systems, to have in place other things that we can occupy our time with outside of work, to ensure that our mental health and our mental well-being is taken care of so we can continue to do the work that we are passionate about, that we're drawn to do, but also be able to deal with all the emotions and all of the difficult situations and the stories and everything that we get exposed to. So it's recognizing that compassion fatigue is real and also knowing that we need to be diligent in what we do outside of work to be able to fill up our own cups so we can continue to fill up the cups of our clients. So there were my takeaways from this episode. Takeaway number one, this was a hard episode for me. Number two, how much I learned and how many people reached out and told me that they had learned from this episode. Number three, find your passion. And number four, the importance of self-care and also recognizing the impact of compassion fatigue. Again, if you want to check out my full interview with Jenna, I'll have a link to it in the show notes. It's episode 64 titled Positive Approach to Dementia Care. I know that podcasts can be pretty much one-sided where it's really just me talking like today's episode or me and a guest talking like some of my other interviews, but I really want to bring your voice into the conversation. I want to hear your takeaways, your thoughts, your comments about this episode. And I also want to hear if you have any follow-up questions about working in dementia care or if you have any other resources that you want to share. So to join the discussion, head on over to otforlife.com slash community and there will be a specific thread to this episode and the discussions that we're having about this episode. I'll have a link to this and everything else that I mentioned in this episode in the show notes. I want to say Thanks so much for tuning in to today's episode. I know that you could be doing anything else in the world right now, and you're choosing to listen to me. And for that, I am so, so, so grateful. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you hear, here are three easy ways you can help support the show. One, head over to otforlife.com to find out more about any resources discussed on the show. Remember, that's OT, the number four, L-Y-F-E dot com. Two, share the podcast with a friend, colleague, or anyone interested in occupational therapy. Three, subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. And while you're there, be sure to leave a review saying how much you love the show. Thanks again. I'll catch you next time, OT for Lifers. First.